So continuing off of the topic of using models, um, I wanted to show how to do a tree, um, a tree view, a key tree view using a model setup. So this is just a model that I built. Um, the underlying um, data structure isn't really that important to me because I just, I just made all the individual items themselves. Um, but what is important is how to manipulate this, how to put the data back and forth, um, and just sort of some of the extensions that I've done to the base Q tree view to make it a little bit more useful. So what you see right here is a bunch of names and a bunch of types. Um, so I just went through and I was being sort of nerdly um, and did like X-Men, Justice League, and the Hooverse, so for all our Doctor Who fans. Um, and then I just have like sub items underneath that. So if we look at, we have individual characters um, and then some, th some information about them. Um, and the way that I built this up, uh, this type here is actually what's determining this little icon color over here. So if I change uh, weapon here to read companion, then it switches it to the sort of purple color, which is really only for Donald Noble. Um, and if I were to insert a column here, uh, uh, hold up one second, I. Uh, Insert column expand all, and then I'm just going to remove this column. Um, by default, if you insert a column, it sort of cycles everything down, but I've just going to expand it all. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, so if you um, add a column here, um, this type is still shifted over and it properly knows where to read this from. Um, and I'm just going to actually insert another column here. I mean, it's all, I mean, I could make this follow with a name, but right now I have this, um, these colors following, um, just sort of sticking to first index. Um, and then the type is sort of what's driving that information. So using the, all the information in the model to define how to edit and view certain things. Um, and again, I can just change this around. And you could argue that his hood isn't really a weapon. So I'm going to call his, uh, intelligence uh, one of his weapons so this is sort of like the base of manipulating some of this information um, then there's a whole aspect of if you want to add in other pieces so I just made in a part where let's see for Dr. Who I'm gonna insert another row and I think from if you saw where I put Jack Captain Jack and he is a hero. Um, so I'm going to make that red over here as well. And I'm just going to remove this column real quick. And I'm going to change this column to be, um, hmm, let's see, something fun. Uh, I can't think of anything at all. Um, I'm just going to make up something. Awesomeness. <laughs> Batman, you get awesomeness level of 10. Um, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just adding in and changing around this information. Um, it's quite easy to, to do once you, you get used to it. Uh, and it's all working throughout its model. Now one thing I will point out to anyone who's ever done this um, and used model stuff, you may have noticed that I just double clicked on this header and manipulated it. That is incredibly annoying to build. Um, there is nothing default in anything of this that allows you to do it. Um, and the way they have it structured, it is wacky. Everything else, like all this information here, works the exact same as a normal model. Um, it's very straightforward. You have these different roles that you can manipulate. Wickedly easy to use. Um, you could essentially make Excel with this without any hassle. But the headers work completely differently. So I had to hack a whole bunch of stuff. I'm making my own item on top of this. Um, and I can change this. Um, that's actually overlaying the view um, to make it look like it's all correct. Um, so that's one of my things. Anyone from the, the makers of Qt uh, re see this video, please make it to where um, you can easily manipulate them. flags for the headers. Uh, why don't you? That's so ridiculous. Sorry, that's my little rant for the day. Um, but this other stuff, like I said, pretty fun. Um, it's easy to manipulate. Um, you remove a row, um, and you have a lot of interaction that you can do. 
Um, and this, like I said, this could be any any sort of information that's uh, hierarchical in nature. You could essentially make your own like editing widgets. I mean, you could think of something like an outliner um, within Maya um, or anything else that you really wanted to build. And you can manipulate it directly through here. You can have other inf interfaces manipulating it as well. Um, but the, the awesome part is that you don't really have to worry about how the data is being encapsulated. You can just work with it and be done. And then if you need multiple trees, you're good to go. So that's my little update for today. Um, this is a fun little learning experience for me. And uh, hopefully uh, once I'm actually teaching this class, people will enjoy this section as well. Have a wonderful day.